A sub seven minute lap of the Nordschleifer in a street legal car was once thought to be impossible. It took determined people like Anthony Gaylett who had the belief and dedication to make it happen. Prior to the attempt, Anthony's team tweaked their R35 GDR's aero kit and in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the huge improvement to the overall aero performance some minor mods to the front bar had. So make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss the dramatic changes. An outrageous goal requires an outrageous car. And what better platform to begin modifying from than the R35 GDR. Anthony's team got stuck in, upgrading the suspension, the steering, they reduced the weight, they upped the brake horsepower to over a thousand, and they installed the Nismo GT3 body kit. You can see the parts list here. And while similar to the GT3 kit, with the large front diffuser, the canards, and bonnet vent, this GDR has these additional bonnet vents and another opening in the front bar to help cool that massive intercooler. We can see here that there are three openings in the front bar for the air to go through. We then have the air travel through the intercooler and radiator before exiting out the bonnet and the wheel arches. We therefore have a combination of the three best flow paths, A, B and C. As we saw in the past video, C is the optimum. By dumping the air in the low pressure region, we can drastically increase the cooling efficiency of the car whilst reducing internal drag. So prior to the sub 7 minute lap attempt, Anthony and his team did some air optimization along with the teams at Race Car Engineering and Mira using Mira's wind tunnel in the UK. So all the information in here comes from the Race Car Engineering magazine. Highly recommend it, not sponsored, but some really great material in there, especially in their back catalogue. Given that this is a Nismo inspired body kit, it's no surprise that we have some really good numbers for drag, downforce and aero efficiency. But when we look at the split from front to back, we can see that only 18.3% of the total downforce is at the front end. Clearly, this isn't ideal. This isn't too surprising when we look at what's going on in the back end. They have a huge spoiler sticking pretty far out there, generating a huge amount of downforce. I mean, look at this thing. It's massive. The goal is therefore to try and increase the downforce, reduce the drag, but these are secondary goals. The more important goal for the day was to try and even out that balance a bit more. The first thing they tested was inserting a cardboard cutout to reduce the size of the huge lower opening, which had some really big positive changes across the board. The small inlet resulted in less drag, increased overall downforce, with a big shift in the downforce balance, removing a small amount from the rear but increasing the front considerably. So what's going on here? If we have a look at this quick mock-up, we can see the engine, the intercooler, the radiator and the three front bar inlets. As the air passes through the inlet, the airflow slows down and increases in temp, increasing the pressure within the vehicle, whilst the high speed air going over the bonnet reduces the pressure in this region. We therefore have the perfect conditions for lift. By reducing the inlet size, we are reducing the amount of air flowing through the vehicle, thereby reducing the internal drag and lift. If we go one step further and build in some ducting, as the team did in their next test, we are further reducing the amount of air flowing where we don't want it, that is around the radiator and into the sides of the front bar, helping to further reduce drag and front lift, giving us the better aero balance seen here. Unfortunately, the team didn't measure the cooling efficiency of these changes, as I believe we would have seen an increase as the air is channeled through the intercooler and radiator. The last test they did was blank off the top inlet, and as you would expect, there were more of the same positive results, but slightly less dramatic. If you're liking the content today, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, check out my other videos, I've got plenty of other videos on this sort of subject, and plenty more to come in the near future. Here we have the change from the baseline, showing the positive changes to drag, overall downforce and efficiency. But most importantly, they were able to fix the balance up considerably, increasing the total downforce in the front from the 18.3% we saw earlier to a lot more healthier 32.5%, whilst reducing drag. An amazing result for some very small changes that we could do in our cars at home. Interestingly, in another test, they extended the sides of the duct up to the intercooler and sealed it with some tape. They also sealed between the intercooler and the radiator with that same tape. So this mod had little to no impact on the aero numbers apart from a slight reduction in the front downforce. Unfortunately, they didn't measure the coolant efficiency as I believe the more air being channeled through the intercooler and radiator would have had a positive contribution for very little impact on the aero.
These results aren't unexpected. We saw similar results in another video of mine, which looked at a study focused on the effects on cooling efficiency and internal drag from different front bar setups. The part of the study that was most relevant was the comparison between the upper and lower inlets of a front bar. They showed that whilst the lower inlet made up just 42% of the total opening, it represented 67% of the mass flow rate through the radiator, doing more than its fair share of the heavy lifting. Here we can see that the lower inlet was 35% smaller, but contributed more flow for the same amount of drag. With the lower section open, there was a stagnation point created just above the opening that helped to funnel the air into the opening, creating a more horizontal flow path and resulting in those large mass flow numbers despite its small size. And in case you're wondering about if Anthony beat the 7 minute lap record, he did. I couldn't find the exact times, but he definitely beat it in this road legal beast of an R35 Skyline. I can't find any footage of the lap, but I did find a video with some onboard footage. It's as crazy as you'd expect. Check it out in the description. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, check out this video here. Also, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I have plenty more videos coming your way. Thanks, and have a great day.